mijn naam is Corine en dit is podcast Eonelia, episode number 32. Um, I'm coming to you from the Netherlands, so that makes me Dutch and I do apologize for any single mistakes I make. Um, if I can't find a word or if I pronounce the word not correctly, then I'll write it down below. Um, you can find all the information about my projects in the description box below. And uh, you can also find me on Ravelry and on Instagram by the name Kreanelia. And um, yeah, this is a podcast about knitting mostly, sometimes crochet. Um, last week I was in Denmark with my boyfriend. And I did film a bit, but then my SD card was full. And um, since then I've knitted quite a lot. And I thought, you know what, I'll just start all over again <coughs> Excuse me, with my podcast. So... Here it is. Um, I have finished something and I am working on a couple of projects and I did some purchases in Germany and Denmark. And if you are curious, you can watch my uh, Denmark uh, adventures at the end of this video. It's not a lot. I did film a bit in Denmark, but not a lot. And uh, yeah, let's start. Uh, I ran out of coffee. Oh no, there's just one sip left. I've just filmed my uh, Dutch video, so uh, there I always drink fresh coffee, but now it's cold. Right. First thing I finished is a pair of socks, and I knitted those in Denmark and Germany, and in the car while driving to uh, to Denmark and no, to Germany and Denmark. Of course, first we go to Germany, and then we ended up in Denmark and I made those socks with this yarn it's called Mylan White from Lana Grossa and this is the color 6013 it's a lovely yarn and it has pink in it and beige and yeah a little bit of light brown lots of fun shades it's a six ply yarn it has 150 grams on it and uh, 390 meters and it's a mixture of 75% uh, wool and 25% uh, polyamide like nylon and yeah you can put it, put it in the washing machine also. So these are my socks and they're not completely uh, the same, not exactly the same but I, I don't really mind. <laughs> And they're just simple socks, simple, basic vanilla socks. But I really like them and they're very comfortable. Um, what did I do? I cast it on 42 stitches with, um, I think it's a 3.5 millimeter. I just, when I just filmed my other video, um, I had to get my knitting my book, my uh, notebook. And I thought that it was written in that book, but it's not. But it's on my Ravelry page, you can find all the details there. But I do remember it's 42 stitches because it's thick yarn and the leg is I think 50 rows. I made a shadow wrap short row hue and then the foot is 55. At first I had 50 rows but that was too short. And then I did the umbrella toe. I think it's called the umbrella toe but I'm not sure. This is how I call it because it has all those lines like an umbrella. And that's my sock. And I really like the yarn, how it uh, blends. Yeah. It's a nice color. Really like it. And they're very comfortable. So, um, next time, maybe I will knit 60, 60 rows for the foot. Because they do fit, but they're all a bit on the snug. <laughs> a bit snug. Is that the correct word? A bit tight. Not too tight because when I had 50 rows it really was too tight. And luckily I added a lifeline before I started the toe, the toe. So I ripped out the toe and added five more rows and now it's fine. But I think next time I will add five more rows. And yeah, very comfortable and I'm really happy with them. And I will make those again. I just put my ball of yarn on the scales. I still have 93 grams left. So there's plenty of yarn left for another pair of socks. 
uh, maybe even two if I uh, do the, the cuff or the yeah the cuff with another color, with another type of yarn. The funny thing is, it says for one pair of socks you need 150 grams, and that's just not true. I I don't understand why I put that on the label. You see that here? There's plenty of yarn for for two pairs of socks. So I think I will stop buying those big balls of yarn because uh, who needs two pairs of the same socks? But maybe I, I will need a pair for someone else, and uh, if they like it, and then I can give them uh, give them to someone. Uh, yeah, so that's my sock. I did knit another pair of socks. It's almost finished, but I don't have it here. But I will show you uh, those socks when they're really finished and. Uh, but this one I completely made uh, during my holiday, except for casting on. I did cast on at home and I did need one or two rows and then I put them in a the bag for my holiday. So these are my holiday socks. Yeah, very happy with them. What else did I do? I applied for a test knit and every time I say I'm not going to apply again or because they, I'm never chosen for test knits only for the people who are not um, uh, very famous yet, if I can call it like that, but I can never not do it. So before I went on holiday, there were two test knits I applied for, one by Ozetta, the Portland jacket, and the other one was the uh, by Kadri, the Ash Slipover, V-neck. And till my own surprise, till my it <laughs> was really a big surprise, I got in by Kadri and then I got nervous. I thought, oh my goodness, if I get in now, what if Ozetta also says you can do it? And then I have a problem because I can't knit them both. So I will never do that again, apply for two test knits at the same time. Too much stress. But luckily, uh, Ozetta rejected me. <laughs> and But I got in at um, Kadri's test knits. And it was really nice to do a test knit for her. I did my ash slipover test knit with this yarn. It's from my stash. It's called Scheepjes Highlands. And I don't know if Scheepjes still sells it. I don't think so because I have this in my stash for years. And when I got in, I knew that I didn't want to buy any new yarn because I thought it's a test knit. Um, I had this in my stash and I really want to make a sweater with this. But I thought it's rather thick yarn and the test knit had to be made with needle 6.5 millimeter. I don't know what it is in US, I'm sorry, but it's a thick needle. And I thought, you know what, I'll just use this. I used five balls and one or two meters from a six ball. When I was uh, binding off, I ran out of yarn. It was literally, literally the last row of my ash slip over that I had to start a new ball of yarn. A bit of a bitchy, but it is what it is. And this is the, what I have made with it. Now, I did make a mistake with the sleeves, uh, with the short rows. When I was doing the second sleeve, I noticed that I made mistakes on the first one, but it's okay. Um, this one is not blocked yet, and I still have to darn in the ends, but uh, I'm probably going to frog this because the original pattern is made with a very light tweedish yarn and I really like that look. Plus I really want to use this yarn for a sweater. But for a test knit I thought you know what I'll just use it for the test knit and uh, I, I already had in mind that I would probably frog it and then make the slip over again with the other yarn. The funny thing was I was making this and then I suddenly, suddenly realized I did have um, light tweed yarn. <laughs> Never mind, this is, uh, this is what it is. Uh, I did make the body a bit shorter because I'm not a very tall person. Uh, it was the first time I made a v-neck so it's probably not perfect. I find this piece rather large but um, I think it is correct what I did. And I really love the fabric of this. 
so now I know how my sweater will look like. <laughs> Let's I'll put it on for you. I mean, it's a test knit, so it's fine um, to make mistakes, right? Uh, the pattern was very writ well written, by the way. Only one or two typos, and the rest was fine, I think. Um, yeah, as you can see, I have pockets in my <laughs> dress, I love that. I could wear this on uh, a dress or on a pair of trousers, then I would tuck it in probably. Um, maybe if I would make it for a pair of trousers, I would make it longer, a bit longer. But for a dress, it's fine. Let me give you a little twirl. I really like it. But this is rather big. But it's probably my own ex um, how do you say it? Unexperienced. I'm not experienced with this yet. It's the first time I made this uh, made a V-neck. Right, the sleeves are I think this this is the wrong sleeve because it curls up a bit. This one is fine. But this one here I made a mistake with the short rows. But this one is fine, yeah, it's okay. So it, it's very nice and comfortable to wear this over a dress, it really is. It's not cold today, uh, yesterday we had 30 deg degrees over here in the Netherlands. Today it's much uh, uh, colder, well it's not cold outside but the weather is, is changed and this is so much better, I don't like the heat. But this feels very comfortable over a dress, so I definitely will make another one. Um, Kadri also has this pattern with a, a crew neck, no not with a crew neck, but with, um, how do you call that, high neck, Call a call. I always forget that word, we, we, in the Netherlands we call it a call trui, a call sweater, but yeah, maybe I'm having the right word, a call neck, that's up and then you can fold it over. I did apply for that test yes, uh, in the beginning of the year, I, I, no, I saw in my notebook and I didn't get in, but this one is the same and maybe this is also a sweater of this pattern, I'm not sure yet, but I think she will, mm, I wouldn't be surprised if she also has um, plans for a sweater, yeah, I really like it. It's a very fast uh, knit, it's a quick knit, one of the test knitters finished it in a couple of days. Uh, it took me a bit longer because after picking up the sleeves, I finished the sleeves and everything, I thought, oh, picking up the stitches for the v-neck will be very difficult. I'll, I'll do that at home in front of my computer in case I don't know how to do it. Well, of course, it was very simple. Uh, I could do it on a sofa. <laughs> it was really easy. I don't know why I was worried so much about the v-neck because... Yeah, it was easy to do and uh, I'm really pleased how it worked out because uh, picking up stitches is always my least favorite thing to do when knitting a sweater or in this case a slip over. But it, it went well and um, if you remember my Anna top, the one I showed you last time with uh, the lilac cotton, it wasn't very neat on the shoulders. Now this time it went much better. It's much, it's so much more straight. But the funny thing is, this one has a bit of a line. Looks a bit different, but also much neater than the inner top. So practice makes perfect, they say, and that's true. Um, there are still some stitch markers at the back. I don't know why. But yeah, this is not blocked yet, and even without the blocking, it looks pretty good. I can really recommend this pattern. It's a quick knit, it's a, it's a fun uh, pattern to knit, um, it's well written, and uh, yeah, it's, because, it's, because you knit, uh, knit this with a thick needle, uh, 6.5, and for the cuff and the hem, and the v-neck you use a 5.5 needle. I don't have the pattern here with me, so I don't know what the sizes in US are, but if I think, if I remember, I will put it down below. You can find all the information, by the way, on my Ravelry page. So that is my 
Ash slipover winner. Yeah, my first KB test knit. Um, when I was knitting this, she already published new test knits, but I didn't apply for that because I just wanted to finish this first. And uh, uh, next week um, I have to go back to school, so I, I will have less time to knit. And then I don't want to stress by uh, the stress of, of finishing a test knit and, and studying and etc. And so this was my test knit and it's okay and I'm really happy and I'm really pleased that she uh, let me do this. So thank you Kadri. It was real fun to do. And uh, maybe until next time. So yeah, that's my Ash Slipover Vina. Right. What else did I do this uh, summer or this holiday? Excuse me, I just have to sit on my foot. Um, as you notice, the camera cuts off my head a bit, but I've tried to fix it and uh, I can't. And my boyfriend's not at home to fix it. He, he usually knows how to do that. Um, he is on his way to Germany uh, to visit family and there's a, there's this 25 year anniversary party this weekend. I was also invited, but I have to work on Sunday, so I can't go. And that's fine. Um, so he'll be back on Sunday, but I thought, he's away now. I have the whole house to myself. It's nice and quiet, and I'm filming this podcast. Right, what else did I do? Um, I bought a couple of projects to uh, Denmark. Um, socks, another pair of socks. Uh, this slipover. And... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> yeah. My uh, a project that I started in March, 18th of March, so it's a long time ago. The no frill sweater combined with the Maya cardigan from Helena Magnussen. So <coughs> this is the no frill sweater. I made it before with um, uh, Rowan filter tweed and scheepjes uh, yarn, scheepjes yarn. But this time I'm making it with another yarn. I'll show it to you in a minute. Oh. And I'm combining this with the Maya cardigan by Helene Magnusson. It's a free pattern on etna.nl and etna.be, Belgium. I don't know if it's also available in English. You have to look. Uh, it might, I'm not sure. But it's a free pattern and it has a schedule, a color scheme. And what I do is I only use this, the bottom and the sleeves. Yeah, this is a better picture. But this is what I will use from this pattern. Now, this is a cardigan and it is a cardigan that you have to steek. So you will knit the whole body like a sweater and then you start uh, Cutting it, now that is something I am afraid to do. I want to try that once, but not yet. Um, maybe I should try it with uh, a sock first or so, just, just a sample. I'm not gonna make this cardigan and then cut it, no. No, it's too scary. But one day I will try to, to steep. Anyway, this is my sweater so far. Um, um, in Denmark, I finished the, the increases for the sleeves and I thought I wanted to finish that before we went back home because then I thought I can knit this piece in the car. That's just st plain stockinette knitting. And yesterday I started with the color work. I should show you the yarns first. Because I just filmed my Dutch video, I always Think, what did I show? What did I not show? <laughs> and never mind, it's always chaos in my podcast. Right. The yarn, this is the yarn I'm using for the body. It's called Ulrika Natuur, and this is one of my favorite favorite yarns. It's the number is 32707. I don't know if it focuses. Beautiful yarn. Green. Green is my favorite color. If you uh, watch my videos before, then you know that. This is Ulrika Superwash. So this one is 
Ulrika Natuur, which means non-superwash. And this, the ordinary Ulrika is superwash. A beautiful brown color. And then I have Ulrika Natuur again. It's like, this is number 32705. It's like a egg white. It's not plain white, just it's a bit of a, it's a bit darker than white. And the last one is Superwash Pure Merino UK. Uh, from my stash, this is all I have left, this is the color denim. It's not bright, but on the screen it looks a bit brighter. And I used to sell this in my web shop. This is really the very last denim I have, so it, it will be enough for my sweater. So this is the combination. Now, so far, I'm really proud of my color work. That, that is also still a bit of a learning process, but that's fine. You learn by doing, right? The dark brown is maybe a bit difficult to see now, but I just started it. In real life, you can see it. Sometimes I think I should have used another type of brown, a bit brighter, but I like this. This is a winter sweater and uh, I like it. I can really see it when I put it on the table. So when it's all finished, you will see, you can see this. Um, this sweater also ends with brown and that's also what I'm planning to do. And oh, no, it's not the sweater, the cardigan. You knit this bottom up but I'm knitting my sweater top down so I had to turn around my color scheme and I also use uh, this is highlighter tape so every time I finish a row I go up and these are the two rows I use this is and this for the body a highlighter tape is so such a handy tool I bought that at Amazon once but maybe you can buy it everywhere, I don't know. I found it on Amazon. And yeah, that is very helpful. So that is what I do. And I'm just working on the color scheme, the, the chart. That blue line, by the way, is a lifeline. Uh, I added the lifeline and then I added one extra row of um, just knit, just a knit row. And then I started the color scheme. I always add lifelines in my uh, uh, knitting in case I make a mistake and then don't know how to, uh, to fix it. Then I can easily unravel it and then put up the stitches back on the needle. But I should have used another lifeline because this is way too thick and you will see that later. But after blocking it probably disappear. Yeah. But I really, really love this yarn. This, this lifeline is after the short rows. Do you see the fabric? It's a bit uh, variegated, lovely green. Green is my favorite. I already tried it on yesterday, the sweater, before I started the color work and it fit. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you can see that. I did post uh, in my stories, I think. I don't know if it's still visible, but uh, it fits. I will make this sweater a bit shorter because I want to wear it on dresses and uh, the same like um, the the v-neck pullover I just showed you. So my uh, sweater will be maybe a bit longer than a pullover, but not too long. Yeah, really like it. It's nice, yeah. So I'm working on this. And I haven't worked on it for months because as I said, I started it on the 18th of March. <laughs> That's a long time ago, is it? Um, yeah, but it's okay and I think I will finish it this winter. I have to. This is basically the only thing I'm working on right now, uh, sweater-wise. There are a few projects I want to start at cost on, but not for now, no rush. As I said, school starts next week, so I'll, I'll have less time. But this is really fun sweater pattern. And I really like the no frill sweater. Um, yeah, I've made it before and I think I will make it again. <laughs> it's just an easy pattern. And you can vary with it. So that's my 
sweater in the back. What else do I have to tell you? Right, I got some yarns. Um, I'm an ambassador for Etna. Etna is a yarn shop in Sweden. And sometimes um, I get free yarns to, to test or to try. And uh, sometimes I have a discount code from them. Uh, at the moment I have a discount code for 30%. Uh, you can buy yarn with 30%. And that's valid in the Netherlands and Belgium only at the moment. Sorry about that if you don't live there. But um, I got some yarns and I will show you them to you. And the yarn I got is to make this sweater. This is also a free pattern on their website. I think all of their patterns are free. So you can have a look. I don't know if they're in English available also, but just have a look. So this one. Um, and the yarn I got. I hope I could choose myself, is again Ulrika Nature, the green one. And I thought I'd chose another one, but I'm not, I don't remember. But um, I'm going to make this sweater or another one, I'm not sure yet. But at least I have the yarn now uh, available, and I just really love this. This is so pretty, this yarn. Now, I got some other yarn from them to try. Um, sock yarn, like this one. This is uh, from Yerbo by Reri, and this is called Green Harmony. This is rather thick yarn. This is yarn, uh, let me see, 100 grams, 150 meters. And you have to knit it with needle size 4.5 millimeter. So that's rather thick. It's 70% uh, wool and 30% polyamide or nylon. Yeah, nice color. Green, of course, I love green. I have the same quality in blue. Also fun. Maybe I can combine them, like for example, the cuff for this color and then the rest of the toe. Uh, so for this one and then combine them. Yeah, but I really like this. Something else I got was Junior, also by Yerbo. Uh, this is, um, how do you call this? Um, yeah, 70% premium acrylic and 30% polyamide, so it's rather, uh, how do you call it, synthetic? Yeah, I, I wouldn't have chosen this, but feels, it feels very soft and it is, I think, very suitable for baby garments or, or children's clothes because you can wash it and... Um, uh, Yes, uh, yeah, you can wash it in the washing machine and it, it's durable, it's, it feels nice. I really like the color. I think I will probably use this in my blanket, the blanket I'm knitting or crocheting. And yeah, it's lovely and it's just fun to try it out, right? Another yarn I got was this one, Ulrika, in the color 7011. This is the color Clementine. It's rather orange. It's not super bright, but it's also not very matte. It is orange. This is not really my color. I do like orange, but I like burnt orange or dark orange. And I think I will use this color to knit some pumpkins for the fall. Last year I also knitted a couple of pumpkins just for decoration. And uh, yeah, I think this will be fun to make some pumpkins. Or I can use it with color work. Because sometimes when you need a color work sweater or, or cardigan, you need a bit, of, a bit of a bright color in it. This is not super bright because uh, you know me, I don't like bright colors. But I think it will be really nice with another uh, color. For example, this... Oh, I'll show you that one later. No, never mind. Don't forget what I said. <laughs> um, something else I got. And this is really something that makes me happy. It's Svensk Ool. It's a Swedish wool, um, four ply, from Yerbo also, and I love this. This is the color Rhubarb Lemonade. That's such a fun name. Oh, I love this. This is beautiful. You knit this with a five millimeter needle. It's 100% Swedish wool. Yeah, love this. I have another color. It's called Swedish Black. Same, same quality, 
So it's not black black, but almost black. A third color I got was, I did write that down, um, Vasa Crisp. It's a bit beige. See how pretty that is. Now with the discount code I have, I probably will also um, buy this because I really love this for a cardigan, for example. And last but not least, I got this green one. It's called Midsummer Green. Now, if you know me a bit, then you know that green is my favorite color, especially this type of colors. I love this. But look how nice this combination would be for a color sweater. I love this or this. Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Really happy with this. Thank you, Edna. You really spoiled me. Right, so those were the yarns I got. I also did buy some yarn during our holiday. I've been in a lot of yarn shops. It drove my boyfriend uh, crazy sometimes. But uh, now the thing is, when we were in Germany, uh, or Germany and Denmark, uh, they, they sold uh, yarns like uh, Sanders Gone, Knitting for Olive, uh, Vilkulana, yarns I've never seen for real, in real life or even touched, but except for the sock yarn by Vilkulana. I got a ball of that once at a knitting day. But to me these yarns, well they're beautiful, I mean I've seen them now, I've got the colors are stunning, um, they feel nice, but to me they're too expensive. I, I just admit it. Um, I have no problems with admitting that. Because I have a job uh, since uh, four months. I work in uh, healthcare. Uh, I work hard. It's, uh, it's a demanding job. Plus I have to go to school. And knitting is my um, escape or crochet. I love to do that. Uh, I don't spend money on... I don't smoke. I hardly drink. Uh, I don't do any funny th stuff otherwise. So... I spend money on yarn and fabrics, fabrics, but still a ball of gra uh, 50 grams that cost 8, 9, 95 euros, I don't know how much that is in pounds or in dollars, to me it's a lot. It really is not. I can't afford a sweater that costs me 150 euros. I find it too much. Uh, and I think I'm not worth it. Uh, that's maybe my problem that I should, shouldn't think about that. Uh, I shouldn't think about myself like that, but I mean 150 euros for a sweater, no, it's not going to happen, maybe if I win the lottery one day, but so I do look out for cheaper yarns. And the funny thing was, uh, if you know Drops, that Scandinavian yarn, I haven't seen it, not in Denmark, not in Germany, now Germany is of course not Scandinavian, but we were in Denmark, I've not seen once Drops. But I did buy some other yarn, so I will show you that now. Um, what did I have? Oh, yeah. First one, the first yarn I bought was in Germany. We were in Flensburg. It's a very nice city. Uh, good for shopping. If you like shopping, go to Flensburg. We found two shops. In one shop they only sold sock yarn and I thought, no, I don't really want this. I already have that kind of yarn. And, and they also sold a lot of souvenirs. It was a bit of a uh, mixed shop, you can buy everything there. Then there was another shop called Lindborg, and we couldn't find it, but it was in a, a street next to the main street. It was a bit hidden, and <laughs> we finally found it. And luckily, on a Monday when the shops were open, there was a big sign outside on the main street that you had to go in there to find the shop. So, I went to Lindborg, I got this lovely sticker, and I always keep those things for my uh, scrapbook. Uh, I have a scrapbook and I put my uh, souvenirs in there and uh, uh, tickets from cafes or anything. So I will cut this out and put this in my book, but not before I have to show you this. So I bought Phil Kulana, some soft yarn. I didn't film because I was the only customer and I didn't dare to film. <laughs> Uh, now this is the yarn 
that I already knew because I had, it was gifted to me once, one ball of this yarn. It's really soft and I bought those three colors. Um, it's called Arvetta by Tokulana and this is a very nice combination. My boyfriend had his uh, birthday party earlier this summer and his, one of his friends gave me a, a book by, uh, called Socks. I think I showed you it in the last podcast. And I saw a very nice pattern with those colors. And I thought, yeah, that's what I want. This is a bit ochre color, hun color number 136. This denim blue, vintage denim blue is 192. And this one is 977. It's a bit beige. I'll show you the label. Focus. Did you want to focus? Yeah. It's a very nice color. Now, with this other ball of yarn I already have, I can buy, uh, make uh, two pairs of socks, maybe three. Yes. And I can also combine this with um, long yarns I still have. It's really nice and soft. Yeah. It's 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. So, yeah. Really happy with this. So, this is all I bought uh, in Germany, in Flensburg. And like my first video, I forget to tell you the colors because the colors were written on the, on the uh, what's it called? On the receipt. It's uh, mustard, steel blue and marzipan. Now, I don't find this really steel blue. I find this more vintage denim. But never mind, it says, it's what it says. Um, and I paid 5.95 euros per ball. Still rather expensive maybe, or not. For a sock yarn it's not that expensive, I think. But lovely in sock and this is my memory to Flensburg. We stayed two days in there, or two nights, and then we drove further to Denmark. Uh, we went to Denmark, and the first thing I bought there was sock yarn. Um, this one, I don't remember the city, I think it was Marstal, but I don't really remember. I bought this yarn. It's dark blue tweed sock yarn by Mayflower, is it called? Yeah, Mayflower. First class tweed. It's a lovely yarn, very soft. And they had so many nice colors. And I thought, yeah, but I, I already have so much sock yarn. But I just wanted to buy it. This is made in Italy, by the way. Um, this is 70% wool, 25% polyamide, and 5% viscose. Feels lovely and soft. And you can knit this on 2.5 and 3 millimeter needle or US 2 or UK 12. Yeah, lovely yarn. Um, the funny thing is, um, we walked on the street over there and my boyfriend saw a group of ladies knitting outside and it was in front of the shop. So I went in the shop and bought that yarn and um, when I went out, ladies were still knitting, but there were also a couple of uh, baskets with uh, yarn that were on sale. And I found this one. This was 25 Danish krona. And this was the only one they had in this color. And that's a pity because if they had more of this one, then I would have bought enough for a sweater quality. But this was the only color I like and they only had one ball left. And I thought, yeah, well, I'm going to buy it anyway. I really like the colors in this one. I have no idea what your oh, brand, it's called Wow Sock Yarn. Never heard of it. Yeah, but color number nine. And this is uh, 50 grams, 210 meters. So this is Sock Yarn. I did buy a lot of Sock Yarn this trip. Now, I wanted to start something new because, uh, something for in the car. And I had this Sock Yarn with me. Uh, I already finished socks with this yarn and I thought, you know what, I'll make a cuff and then I will use this. But that's not a good combination because this sock yarn is much thicker than this one. So I will have to un uh, unravel this, I will throw this until the cuff and I will leave the cuff on this needle. This is a 3 millimeter needle and this I will knit with the 2.5 so I will separate this. 
I found a lovely pattern that I want in it, also by uh, Edna, a free pattern on Edna. And yeah, that's what I'm going to make. But then this one with another yarn, and this one I will use for something else. I thought I'm just gonna try it, but no, it's not gonna work because it really is thinner. Uh, let me see. The funny thing is, it says this one is for three millimeter, and this for two and a half and three millimeter. But it's, there really is a difference. So you can, maybe you can see it. Yeah, it's much thinner. I really thought so, but I thought I'd try it anyway. And sometimes you have to try something, and when it doesn't work, it's okay, and you can frog it. What else did I buy? Oh yeah. In another city, I don't remember the city, sorry, I bought cotton and this was on sale. Let me put it over there because there's a window over there and you can see it better. I bought DMC cotton, it's baby cotton, just white. One ball was 29 Danish kroner and it was now on sale for 15 kroner per ball. I thought, oh, that's good. But if you bought 10 balls, it only cost 100 kroner, so that was even cheaper. Uh, this is a DK light, three, yeah, DK light yarn, 100% um, cotton, and you knit it as a four millimeter. It is 50 grams and has 106 meter. That's 116 yards. Um, yeah, I, I thought, well, I really want to make the summer knus sweater. Uh, I think it's called summer knus. And I need about seven or eight skeins of yarn, but I just uh, counted how much it would cost, and that would cost me 120 Danish kroner. But 10 balls was 100 kroner, so that was cheaper. <laughs> I thought, okay, I'll buy 10. And, and if I have a couple of left, I'll make something else with it, and maybe a striped uh, sweater or something. So this is what I have, 10 balls of DMC, white cotton. And the lady of the shop said, if you wash this, it will be soft. It still will be soft because it's really typical baby yarn. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Never tried it. So that was a nice discount. And lastly, I bought soft yarn again. Uh, when we went home, it was on a Saturday, last Saturday, um, we still had some Danish kroner left. So first we did was we go, we went to the bakery to buy some. Cinnamon pastry, Danish pastry. We love Danish pastry. And we bought something for our neighbors who took care of our cats. Still had money left. Well, uh, on our way home, we, went, we stopped uh, at the city to drink a coffee with a cinnamon roll, of course. And there was a supermarket next to it, or, or that little cafe ish thing was in the supermarket. So. My boyfriend ordered the coffee and I went into the supermarket and I saw yarn. So when I went back to him, I said, uh, we drank our coffee and said, look, there's yarn in that uh, supermarket. And uh, I bought some yarn after the coffee. And this is what I bought. Six balls, two of each. Uh, it's a bit, this is not really white, it's uh, off-white. This is also sock yarn, 70% wool and 30% nylon. This is uh, how much? Mm, doesn't say, does it? Oh yeah, 50 grams, 150 meters. And I've got this light blue, a bit variegated. And this one, beige. Strumpegarn which means sock yarn. So I bought two of each and I really was in doubt because I thought if I buy one color, maybe it's easier to do, uh, to, to use it for a sweater, for example, or a sweater with short sleeves because it's rather thin. You have to knit this with needle two or two and a half. And I don't use that, I don't do that. I find it too thin, but it's of course sock yarn. So maybe I will combine this with another color, and, but the plan was to make, to turn this into a sweater or a tee. We'll see. But I really like the colors together as a striped sweater. 
So that is what I bought and um, we still had a few kroner left and <laughs> not enough, not enough to, to buy something but yeah, this, uh, I have a lot of sock yarn I noticed now. <laughs> I don't have to buy any sock yarn next uh, couple of years I think. But this is what I have and um, it's a nice memory. Because if I use that, then I will, rem then I will remember the holiday that, uh, that we had in Denmark. Um, at the end of this video, I have some footage of our holiday. I didn't film a lot in the shops, in the yarn shops, because I was a bit nervous. Very often, I was the only one in the shop, and then I feel a bit awkward to film there. But I've seen a lot of yarns. And, uh, what I also saw in De Denmark, very often people were knitting in cafes or on the street or we, we went to a mill one time and they also had a, a show with very old cars and there was also a lady sitting next to the car just knitting yeah happily knitting and um, we went to a, a nice cafe once just to drink and have another cinnamon roll or cinnamon pastry and my boyfriend said look over there there are two ladies knitting so I wasn't the only one, it was great. Yeah, so we had a lovely uh, time and I'm glad to be home, glad to be back, um, hope is best. Anyway, thank you for watching this video and uh, I hope to see you next time. And um, if you have any questions, do leave, uh, ask me in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, enjoy your week and hope to see you next time. Bye bye, thank you.